time. Okay. You been locked out? Yeah. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? We, we locked the door when we first come in, so at any rate, yes. uh, yes. no, you're welcome. Okay. This is one of our, our newer um, um, licensees, or soon to be licensed, I forgot your name. I'm James. James, I'm hey. sorry. James, everybody, everybody, Hi. James. That's me, so. I'm Hi. Cheryl Halpern. I'm Hi, the Cheryl. mortgage person here. Hi. All right, since we've got a few new people in the room, let me kind of tell you the rules. Um, we're going to, this particular class, I actually can probably do in two hours. Okay, we normally go from one to three. Sometimes it's not uncommon for me to go for three hours and go to four. So with that being said, we don't take breaks and you don't have to apologize if you have to leave early or get up and raise your hand, I got a bug out, or, or quite honestly, if you, if you come late. So if, if next week you, you, you know, hey, there's no way I can get to class till 1.30 or 2 o'clock, don't worry about it. It's okay to come in late, it's okay to leave early. If you get anybody else to use the restroom, don't ask permission, just get up. You will not insult me. Sometimes, believe it or not, at the end of these classes, I'm the only one in here. So, um, I'm, everyone had other appointments. I'm now playing to the video camera, and I just look like a madman in here talking about myself. So, at any rate, if we'll probably finish this close to 3 o'clock today. It's possible we'll go a little bit over. But in any, if anybody has appointments and you have to leave early, don't worry about it. Um, that's, just the way, that's just the way we run. Okay. What we're doing today is, by the way, I think on the on the board outside we have this advertised as MLS training. Um, we're not really going to do a lot of MLS training for a couple reasons. Number one, it's a completely separate class than what I want to do. Um, and to be blunt, I'm not the MLS training expert anymore. I don't live in the MLS nearly as much as I used to. So if you just want to learn how to operate within the multiple listing service, we will do another class on that. Um, but so what we're really going to, what the real purpose of this is going to be within the MLS, we're basically going to talk about setting property values. Well, my pen is already dying. Setting property values. Okay. So in other words, you have a <coughs> listing appointment tonight. You need to come to the seller with a market analysis uh, and you also need to be able to verbalize to the seller your house in this neighborhood with this square footage and this condition and this location with these amenities is worth X. Okay, um, And to be honest with you that can be difficult sometimes. You know sometimes it's easy there's five houses just like yours that sold for $230,000 so yours should sell for $230,000. Sometimes it's a little harder as you're doing those searches, you're like, boy, I'm having a hard time comping this, okay? Which we've got a couple new people in the room, but when you hear, you know, what are the comps, and I'm having a hard time comping the property, or the property comps for, basically what we're talking about is comparable sales. Comparable sales, comps is short for comparable sales. So, what we're going to do, we're going to give you what I hope, if you follow these general rules, um, and again, it doesn't always work. So I'm this work. What I'm going to show you today will work for probably 80 to 90 percent of the properties that you're going to try to set values on. There are some tough ones where, and we'll talk about that near the end. There's some properties that are just, they're just super unique. There's just nothing else like them out there. I have no magic bullet for that. Okay, you know, if it's just so unique, there's literally nothing to comp it with. Then you know. Sometimes you just you do the best you can, or maybe you're comping a property in in one area, but you're way across town into another area where traditional appraisal guidelines would say you're too far away, or maybe in some cases you're at, you're in a different city. <clears throat> super super tough, because quite honestly, one of the things that we want to do is we want to keep our guidelines at, as close as possible to what the appraisers are going to use for their guidelines, because. If, if we use guidelines that say, yeah, we use comps here, 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 and here, um, we think the house is worth 230, and then the appraisal comes in and says, wow, your circle is way too big, okay? In this particular property, you need to stay within a half mile. And sometimes they'll say, with this particular property, you need to stay within uh, a quarter mile. And, and that would be because there's so many comparables available for that particular. In other words, if you've got, we'll pull up a map, but if you've got a property you're trying to comp, and there's three, four, five, six, eight 
comps that are, are, are almost identical within a very short radius of that property, the appraisers are going to want to use those comps. But you can't, so let's go, let's go three quarters of a mile away and find a similar property that sold for 360 or 320. Even though in some cases that might work, but if you have a whole bunch of comps that are model matches like with, within a block, the appraisers are going to use those because they're more comparable. They're basically closer. So we're in the MLS. Okay. First of all, we got a couple new people. If you don't have access to the MLS, you're not going to be able to do this. And by the way, you can't work in this office without being a board member and MLS access and sharing somebody else's isn't going to work. So we're on the MLS. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go a little global on this. So I'm going to... I'm just going to go up to the search. I'm going to do a detailed search. And um, now, again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. We have some agents in the room that have a little more experience. So you, and by the way, chime in if you think, well, wait a minute, what do you think about doing it this way? But let's just let's just give you a general idea. And by the way, we always use not always, but we use a, a little neighborhood up in Simon Ranch as sometimes as our example. So we're going to use that. We're going to we're going to pretend that we've got a listing on Village. Um, up in Siamese Ranch, and let's just suppose it's um, approximately um, 1,900 square feet, something like that. Okay. So with that in mind, what I want to do is the first thing I want to do is I want to search actives. Okay. Now keep in mind we're setting a value on what this house is going to sell for. In most cases, the active listings are not going to be the predictor of what the value is going to be. Um, but in some cases it may. I mean, it absolutely may be the predictor of value. Um, no. So well, we're going to start with active listings. <clears throat> and now again, we're in the we're in Marino Valley. You put two five two. Oh, I always do that. Excuse me. Marino Valley is two five nine. Um, Riverside is two five two. Um, so I just wanted. So this is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start active listings in Marine Valley. It's going to give me a number of 303. Okay. So I'm for just for giggles. I'm just going to kind of write these down. Um, 303 actives in Marine Valley. Okay. Now we set our property square footage is about 1,900 square feet. Okay. Now this doesn't always work. It should work pretty well for this particular property, this particular neighborhood. The next thing I want to do is I say, okay. Let's see if we can narrow down all properties in the city. And by the way, this is the entire city. So remember what we just said. Will the appraiser allow me to comp a property here with a similar property six miles across town? In most cases, not. If it's a 20-acre horse property and the only other 20-acre horse property is six miles across town, maybe. But for what we're talking, that's not going to work. So we're going to keep on, we've got the whole city here. So active marine valley, so under square footage, as a general rule, I like to take 200 square feet on either side of what I'm trying to comp. So I'm going to come up here in the square footage section. I'm going to go 1,700 to 2,100, okay? I went down to 60, okay? So I went from 303 to 60 in the entire city, which at least from a square footage standpoint, are similar to what I'm trying to comp. Okay, so I'm just, I've got that. Which, by the way, everything that I'm doing, let, 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 we're going to kind of, in some ways, pretend that this is a listing presentation. Okay? If you have the opportunity to, after you've done your full blown printed, prepared listing presentation, and I am now at the seller's kitchen table, and you guys are all my sellers, if you have the opportunity, and it doesn't work for all clients in all circumstances, but I would say probably half of the time this will probably work for you. You want to have your laptop available, you want to have your Verizon broadband card available, and you actually want to go through this process with your seller. Especially if you have, and I, when I said this process, I mean what we're doing right now in front of the seller. Even though you have a fully printed out CMA, which has all of this stuff already, you boiled it down into a presentation. You want to be able to do this, and frankly, if you can do it live and on the fly, and you can speak in what manner that instills confidence, uh, and you know what you're doing. You, by the way, if you don't know what you're doing, and you can't back up what you have in paper, well, number one, you shouldn't be in the first place. But you never want to wing this. 
don't wing this in front of your client because frankly you're gonna it, they're gonna know it they're gonna know that you're, and you're gonna embarrass yourself so at any rate so it, again I'm gonna kind of bounce back and forth from training class to a, kind of almost a presentation so if you guys are my seven sellers who own this house I'm gonna sit back and say okay this is the deal guys there's 303 houses for sale in the entire city mr. and mrs. seller I may make a comment on that and part of my commentary might be inventory is low. low. However, it's also improving a little bit. I might sit back and say, by the way, just for reference, 10 years ago, there was between 1,500 and 2,000 properties available in the city. And I might add a little commentary as to what does that mean? Why have we gone from this to this? And obviously, it has everything to do with the the financial collapse and the real estate collapse over the last several years that we've been in. So I may kind of do a little pause and then say we started with 303. 60 of the 303 are within your price range. So again, if I'm in my presentation mode, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there's approximately 60 properties on the market at, at this point in our, in our criteria that we're competing against. By the way, that's not very many. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, keep in mind, this is the entire city. So let's face it, there are people that only want we're, this property we've already identified as Sunbeam Ranch. So we're going to tighten that up a lot. But there, there's, oh well, there's a lot less than 60 because a lot of people only want. But there's also people who will never want Sunbeam Ranch because it has a homeowners association. So some buyers will only want to be there. Some buyers will not want to be there. So as we're having this presentation, you have 60 properties that you're competing. Okay. Now, again, I sometimes I bounce around on how I'm going to do this, um, but let's just let's just add let's just add the pendings in here for a second. So I'm going to come in and add pendings. Okay, so I went from 60 to 109. So that means I've got 59, 59, or excuse me, 49. I've got 60 actives and 49 pendings. So again, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, just to kind of put this in perspective. There's currently 109 properties that have for sale signs in the yard, in theory, mm -hmm. that have a for sale sign in the yard today in the city of Reno Valley between 1,700 and 2,100 square feet, you're right in the middle, that are either currently on the market looking for buyers or, in this case, 49 of them have found buyers. Yeah. You might want to do the backup offers in it. Ah, see, there you go. See, that, that, this is something that I learned just a few weeks ago. I was not really... That was not on my radar, and obviously it's still not on my radar. Eric's reminding me of something that I stumbled across about a month ago, and that's the backup offer status. I wasn't even paying any attention to that, okay? And I need to, and I forgot about it again. Um, so if we add up the backup, now I don't want to turn this into a complete backup. Okay, so we added another 22. So let's just, so we got 22 approximately in a backup offer. Um, so again, well, what does that mean? Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you've now got 131 properties, 60 active, 49, for lack of a better word, in an escrow, let's call it a little bit firmer of an escrow. Mm -hmm. And another 20 or so properties that for whatever reason, maybe the agents are playing games, but for whatever reason, they're in escrow, but the agents have also said, hey, we're taking backup offers, okay? So again, about 131 properties that match our criteria. All right? Now, let's add something else to this. We're going to add the closed sales. Now, when you first do this, and if you're doing this live, you got to know what you're talking about, because now we just jumped to 20. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm pointing at, hey, there she is. Hey. Um, we jumped to over 2,500 properties, so we have to set a criteria in here, and we have to set a closing date criteria. Now, depending upon, pull up a chair anywhere. Um, depending upon um, where you, um, hold on just two seconds. Andrea, right? Yes. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Got you this time. And who's your friend? 
Denise. Hi, Denise. How are you? I'm Lance. How are you? Denise, everybody. Everybody, Denise. Hi, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> okay. So we've added closed. Now, when we add the closed, we jump to a large number of properties. So we went from 131 to over 2,500. So we want to put a close of escrow date on here. Now, today is March 6th, 2014. Market conditions are such that depending upon what I've seen in the last three, four, five, six, twelve 12 months, mm -hmm. may vary depending upon how far back I want to go with comps, okay? Generally speaking, you don't want to go back more than six months, okay? Um, but ha are there occasions where I've gone back further? Mm -hmm. Yes. If I, well, let me give you, let me, let's, let's, let's pretend for a moment. Um, Put in my COE date. Let's pretend. Let's pretend this we're doing a condo complex, and we know there hasn't been a lot of stuff sell. So we started with 130. By the way, this total I think we said was 131. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little game here, but let's suppose I went back six months. I'm not gonna do that. I'm only gonna go back six days. But let's pretend that I went back six months. And by going back six months, I only added five properties onto the sold. <clears throat> or I only added one because it's a very tight community. Then I might say, okay, well, what if I went back seven months? What if I went back eight months? What if I went back a year? Okay, Because I want to have some sort of solds to look at, especially if the number is very, very small. Okay? The problem with that is if you're going to go back more than six months, you're asking for trouble. Okay. Now, in some cases, now this isn't so much the case today as it was a year or so ago, but it might have been a year, two, two years ago, for example, you could have gone into a neighborhood and found nothing and sold. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Literally. So, well, let me, well, when did the last one sell? The last one sold 11 months ago. Okay, well, it might not be a good comp, but at least it's, it's information. So I might go back a little farther. So in this particular case, I am, obviously I just kind of tricked the system there a little bit. I am going to go back about six months, and let's just call that, what do we want to call that, October 1st? Yep, September 1st. <clears throat> let's just do September. I'm wondering, because this is what I usually do, that's yes. my opinion. Do you ever just put 0-180? Uh, as far as the number of days, yeah. I, think, I think it works just as well. Okay. I'm doing it on, I think in here you have to put a date, don't you? Yeah, close this. No, I always just put zero through ninety, and it shows how many days back it goes. Yeah. Okay, I guess that okay that works. That's why this is not an MLS training class. I learned something myself today. Okay, so there's a there's a little trick that I was unaware of, and there's a dozen tricks that I'm unaware of. Um, I guess old dog, new tricks. <laughs> but I'm going to put in the date. Yeah. So the, the way I've done the date, so I'm September, October, November, December, January, February, so that gives us six months. So I'll go to September 01, 13 plus. So it's the equivalent of what Eric just said, except instead of putting zero to, zero to 180, I've given it a hard date. Okay. So with that in mind, now I went from 130 to 347. Now that's now again one thing I'm also looking for is I'm like I'd like to see a, a specific percentage. I'd like to have a CMA, which by the way, what I would like to have and what you always get is not the same, okay? But in this particular case, maybe I have a good balance. I've got about I've got about 131 properties that are in active pending status. We said about 60 that were active, and let's just call it you know 70 that were pending. Well, now I've added another call it 200 approximately that were actually in the sold status so I've got about twice as many properties that have sold obviously my numbers are a little bit off than I have that were the active and pending and, and all, all the, what that does is at least tells me one thing there is a sample of sold properties within 1700 and 2100 square feet that's pretty significant that I can use now the challenge is is my property over here and are all of these sold over here? If that's the case, I got a problem. Okay? But for now, let's run with that. Okay, now keep in mind, where am I? I'm in the entire city. Right? I don't want to be in the entire city. 
So let's come up here, and I like to do the map search. Maybe there's better ways to do it. By the way, you could type in the address. The address. Yes. I didn't do that, but you could type that in very easily. But I think you need to be careful with that. Okay. One of the reasons you need to be careful with that is going to become obvious in just a minute. So I'm going to kind of manually go up here. I'm going to manually come up, and I'm going to kind of go to the area, and zoom in here a little bit. Okay, the house that I said that we were going to comp was on Village, and it's in this general location. Okay. Now, I could have manually typed in, and I could have said, give me everything within a one-mile radius, two-mile radius, half-mile radius. And this is why I think you need to be careful with that. I don't rec you can do that just for giggles, but I would not recommend you do that and actually print out a full-blown market analysis, get it bound up nice and pretty, and present it. I'm going to tell you why here in a minute. Who's familiar with this area that we're comping? Okay, a couple, three, four of you. Right. Let me give you, an, by the way, I made this mistake before, okay. So I'm 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 giving you a mistake example that um, I've learned learned from my mistakes. Shall we? Okay. We want to. By the way, we we haven't refined the search, so we're still at the 350 properties or whatever. But at some point, we're going to isolate it into this area. If I was to run a comp and said this is the property I'm trying to sell, and I did my mile radius, or even half a mile radius. Can we agree and tell me when tell me when I when I'm saying something wrong here? Are are for the most part are these properties going to be comparable to our subject? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How about up here? Um, yeah. Okay. I'll go with that. You're yeah. hesitating because yeah. you got the lake. These the are the lake little bit bigger that, houses. That but we're outside. still working for our square footage, but okay. they, it could be deemed that these are maybe a little superior right. location. Sure. Okay. Right. How about up here? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're good. How about over here? No, it's too, no. Too far. it's too far. But is it? Well, is it too far? It's still pretty close. This, by yeah. this, this, by the way, is is less than a half mile. Oh, okay. They're comparable, yeah. but there's no HOA. Comparable, there. no exactly. HOA. Hidden Springs, Sunnymead Ranch. Right. We could use those if there was nothing else, um, and they yeah. are somewhat comparable. Yeah. But maybe not as comparable as as these or these. Or again, we might even be able to make an argument that, well, maybe these are a little more comparable than these, even though this is Sunnyme Ranch and this is Sunnyme Ranch, but these are maybe, maybe, it's very subjective, and a little bit of a superior location, even though it's in the same homeowners association. Mm -hmm. These homes look and feel a little bit more the same, mm -hmm. but they're not. So, so I can go either way on this. How about, this is an easy one. How about down here? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Follow me. What's your name again? Denise? Denise. Do you know this neighborhood at all? No. Okay, good. You're, you're a perfect example. <laughs> Without knowing this neighborhood, you've got uh, this house right here, we're going to comp it to one over here. No. Wait a minute. That's your name, Denise? Without knowing this neighborhood, and let's say we have houses that are, our house is going to be 1,950 square feet, and we found one over here that's 1,949 square feet, okay? And then we've got one over here that's 1,941 square feet. Which one do you like better from a comp standpoint? You don't know the neighborhood. You haven't seen the houses. You're not out in front of them parked. Help me out here. You want the one that's closer. You want the one that's closer, okay? Makes sense, all right? Uh, Having said that, everybody immediately said no. Well, you said no because we know that this neighborhood is not like this neighborhood. And it's not just, is there a big difference between, we, I kind of hinted and, and, and said, maybe we could use a comp over here because they're very, very similar. Main difference is homeowners association, no homeowners association. But we all jumped on it and said, no way will we use a comp here. And the main reason is because the neighborhoods are so vastly different. And again, homeowners association, no homeowners association. Mm -hmm. But there really is no comparison between these two neighborhoods. Okay. Um, now this is the danger. This is the mistake I've made before. I haven't done it on this particular area. But there was, let me, let's, let's get on our plane and let's fly a little bit. Okay. 
All right. Ten years ago, I'm selling a house over here. This is LaSalle, I'm north of Iris, I'm south of Alice, or uh, Alessandro, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm, I'm in here. Okay? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between this neighborhood and this neighborhood? Mm -hmm. the, let's just say a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay? These houses are, actually, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm in the wrong spot. I think you want yeah. I'm in the wrong spot. Thank you. Because those two neighborhoods are somewhat Yeah, they're pretty similar. similar. Yeah. yeah. In the wrong spot. In the wrong spot. Okay. What's the difference between this neighborhood and this neighborhood? Oh. A lot. Okay. And I'll just, without getting the particulars, these houses over here were built in the 40s. Mm -hmm. These houses were built in the 80s. Okay. Um, I did a market analysis and I sent it to my seller. James is my seller. I did a beautiful thing and I'm trying to comp that, which is very interesting. There's nothing over here um, that falls between 1,921 square feet. So I sent James my market analysis. And again, a lot of times you don't get to sit in front of the client and explain this stuff. So I sent it to him in the mail. I didn't get the listing. I call him up. I didn't. I expected. By the way, this is a client that I've had for a while. Somebody. This, mm -hmm. this is a client that was. This should have been a no-brainer. James, I sent you out the CMA. And, uh, last I talked to you, it was like, man, you sound like you were hot to trot, ready to go. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. What's going on? I haven't heard back from you. It's been a few days. Oh yeah, Lance. I decided to list with the ABC company. What? <laughs> <laughs> this was slam dunk. Mm -hmm. What? what why, why? 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 Huh? Why? Oh, Lance, you were comping my properties with houses on Yolanda and Juanita. Obviously, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, wow. Now, whether or not we use those comps within the actual analysis was irrelevant because they appeared in the paperwork. We, by the way, you gotta be careful. Sometimes you will have properties that are pertinent to your comparable house, the house you're trying to sell. But, and you may have properties physically printed on the sheet that you know right off, the, we have to discount that one. We immediately have to discount. Even though it kind of falls within the criteria, don't pay any attention to that one, okay? But I need to be able to communicate that to James. And I've said the reason that the property on Yolanda and Juanita were on there is just because it fell within the criteria. Even though it's on the paperwork, I did not use those properties to determine your value. Okay? Well, I never got the opportunity to tell him that. He just assumed because it was on the sheet, I was using those properties to comp his value, and I was done. Okay? So, you need to know your neighborhood. Now, the flip side can also be true. Sometimes this can work in... in it, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to our area that we want to be in. The exact opposite sometimes can do just as much harm to you. Now we 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 kind of made a statement a little earlier that this property may be a little superior than to these properties, mm -hmm. or we're still in Sunnymead Ranch, but we're going to fly over here. These properties could be deemed a little superior to this property. Actually, let, let me not not make that as a, as an assumption. Let's make it as a statement of fact. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> these properties are superior to these properties, even though they're still within Sunnyme Ranch. They're still in the homeowners association, and, but there's a couple of reasons: it's quality of construction, the location's a little better. Maybe we've got some elevation and some views here. We have larger lots up here. We have a variety of things. So the same thing is true, only this time it's in reverse. I've now sent my CMA to James. James lives over here. I have some comps over here. These comps, in theory, should sell for what? Higher values. Higher values. I've left them on my CMA. I've told James, I think your house is worth 220. He sees comps on my analysis for 290 or 300. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have done what to those? I have dismissed them with no explanation. Mm -hmm. So now, now I may be sending the message, which by the way, I very well may want those on my CMA. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not saying I want to take them off, but if I'm going to leave these low flyers mm -hmm. that are really shouldn't be there, or if I'm going to leave these high flyers that maybe I want to be there, I, I also need to be able to give him an explanation. So if I'm sending out these CMAs blind ladies, hey James, there's four properties on here. They're on the analysis, but I want you to disregard it because for obvious reasons your property is superior. These are old, blah, 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 blah. I left them on there just if for no other reason because they came up in my search. Which, by the way, could I easily pick those out? I'll pick them out. I also want to be able to do the same thing. I say, oh, by the way, James, there's six properties that are over in the um, Premier, which, by the way, that's the name of this. This is the Premier track, Premier or something. Um, I left them on the CMA, but don't get too excited because those properties are selling for 293.10, and yours is going to be in the 230.220. And then I need to explain why, because he may not know. But then again, he may know. He's been here a long time and he understands what's going on. He's going to get it. But I want to be able to sit back and say, they're larger lots, they're better quality. Which, by the way, you've got to be careful sometimes. You know, larger lots, kind of hard to argue with that. Well, they're, 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 those homes are built better than yours. Is that, <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah. Well, I'm telling you that what I'm saying is the truth. Those homes are built better than yours. How we present that, and how that is presented to the client, is a whole other story. So at any rate, um, so the, the, this is one reason why I really, really, really don't like using the radius search. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to we're going to see zoom out a little bit. And this isn't going to be perfect. And if you guys think I'm making a mistake, someone stop me. So I'm going to draw a little line here. And. Um, Okay, so here's where I want to be. This is Manzanita, if you know the neighborhood. I don't want anything south of Manzanita, so I'm going to come over here. Now, do I want this neighborhood up here? No. I, I might not, but for now I'm going to leave it on. Okay. I may take it out later. So I'm going to go ahead and grab up to here. And again, do I want this area around the lake? Maybe not, but you know what? I think I want to, at least for now, I want to take a look at kind of where I'm at. I'm going to, by the way, everything above this, are these better houses than these? Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I need to make a decision. Do I want to include those or not? And again, it, it, I might, one day I might do a CMA and I might include them and the next time I might take it back. Because mm -hmm. maybe there's something extraordinary about this house. This, uh, even though these are newer, larger, better built, Maybe my subject property has been completely remodeled and these people have just come ballistically nuts with it. So I may say, you know, I think I, I do want to include these, okay? So for now, I'm going to leave it out. Um, um, where am I? Okay, I'm going to come here. Now i got a decision to make. Do I want hidden springs or not? Maybe, maybe not. In this particular case, I'm going to make a decision, yes, I want hidden springs. So I'm going to come up here, let's draw my line up, and over here, and here, and like that. Okay, so now, depending upon what the results return, and depending upon my the analysis of the data, I may come back and change this entire search. But for now, based upon my experience in this particular area, this particular location, I'm not terribly uncomfortable with this. I'm feeling pretty good about this. But I know this area. This gets into the question if someone comes and says, hey Lance, I got an opportunity to take a listing in, um, in um, Whittier. What do you think? I'm going to say, go for it. Your license is good for the entire state of California. But do you know where you're going? Do you know enough about the city of Whittier to do your client a service? And if you do, if you know the difference between this neighborhood and this neighborhood, then rock and roll. Now if you don't, then you've got some work to do. I'm not saying don't take the listing, but what I'm saying is you just don't have to sit on the computer and you're going to go in tomorrow and you're going to go take this listing. You're going to get off your butt. You're going to get, and you, by the way, if you don't have this, all I can tell you is you need to get it as quickly as you can. You need, and it's so much easier today than it was when I was in the business. 
but you need the ability to be in your car with live access to the multiple listing as you're driving up and down these streets. Oh, I can't afford a broadband card. I can't afford a, the internet package on my iPad. We're going to sell a $250,000 house, but multiple thousand dollars of commission. You need to be able to afford 30 bucks a month to do this research. Okay? And by the way, forget about Whittier. If, if, if somebody calls you today and says, I want to go list a house in your own backyard, who's previewing property every day? One. Okay? All of you, where's my newbies? Got a couple of newbies. Very first thing you want to put on your calendar when you start getting into this real estate business is every day. I don't mean seven days a week, but five. Five days a week. You need to determine what area are you going to be the local expert. Let's say it's Reno Valley because this is where we're at. Every single day, you need to be out in your car, touching, feeling, smelling, looking at all of these properties. Because that makes this so much easier when you've already been out there. Because you will already know the difference between this and this. And you'll know it because you've been there and you've seen it. You have seen the fact that, oh, there's no comparison. I'm, I'm literally, I could throw a rock from this house to this house and literally, I mean, the, the fence is back up to one another. Okay? They are completely different neighborhoods. Now, the flip side of that is if you don't know where you're at, you can drive into this neighborhood and then go drive into this neighborhood and you won't know the difference. They visually are pretty much the same. Well, that takes a little bit more practice. Which is why when you're out, you've got your laptop in your car, and you're pulling up stuff, and you see, oh, homeowners, what's this whole association do? Now it's on your ranch. 92 bucks? 92 dollars? And now you're driving up here, and you just pull up a house, and you see no homeowners association. You're like, oh, I thought I was still in some of your ranch. Where am I? We'll do a little bit of research. Oh, no, I'm in Hidden Springs. There's no association. But guess what? Who knows that there's a special assessment tax annually in Hidden Springs? Guess how much it is? It's the, almost the exact equivalent to what the homeowners association dues are. Yeah. So people who are moving into Hidden Springs to save the money because they don't want to pay the homeowners association dues pay anyway. are paying it anyway in the form of a special assessment tax that this neighborhood has and this neighborhood doesn't. Mm -hmm. And they don't get the association. So all of these smarty pants over here that thought they were saving 90 bucks a month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are not now they may say well that's fine because I still don't want to be in the association because I don't want anybody telling me where I can park my car and all the rest of this sort of stuff but at any rate you have to know your neighborhoods so if you're not out and Bob's the only one who raised his hand if you're not out previewing properties and previewing is very simple by the way previewing means nothing more than I'm I, I want to go look at five houses today pull up the hot sheet what's active what's pending and I'm gonna go look at five houses that's all Okay, we'll take a look at it. Okay. You know, there is a little difference. That homeowners association that people don't like keep the houses nice and clean. You if you go into yeah. that next track, you got, uh, you, well, you don't know what you have. Who, who in here likes homeowners associations? Who hates them? Okay. You're outvoted. <laughs> you know, homeowners associations can go anywhere from $50, and I've seen them all the way to $550. You'll have buses, you'll have minuses. It just depends. No, plus it just depends. Depends on the client. Depends on the client. So let's let's assume for a moment that we're. Which, by the way, I got a little lazy. I cut off. I might that comp name. I might I might have lost one. Yeah, it's right inside. The I don't know. Did I get it or not? Yeah. Maybe I better be careful because that yeah. might be the one yeah. mm -hmm. that I needed. Because yeah. you guys see, I, I I got this street here, Kobe. I missed a piece. And I missed the piece up here. And, you know. So. Better. Guys, you've got to be professionals. Okay, so this is what we've got. Now we had whatever we had, 300 and some odd properties. So let's go back to our results and let's see what um, what we did. So we went from that to um, to 55. Okay, now again, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna flip back into my presentation mode here a little bit. Now let's assume, without doing anything else, that this is what our CMA is going to look like, and let, and we've printed it out. And we've got all of our assumptions and our analysis on here, and we ended up with 55 properties. So one of the things I would like to be able to do in front of my client at the kitchen table is, is basically boil down the paper search with the live search 
so that I can address any of James's concerns live. You know, well, this property has a pool. This property has a view. This property was remodeled. This property was a foreclosure. This property was as a short sale. This property. And now, again, if I've been previewing and I'm the neighborhood expert, I can just boop, and then I can click the button to verify what I just told them. Now, if I don't know anything about the neighborhood, and I've got, which by the way, is, is it entirely possible that the seller knows more about their neighborhood and the comps than you do? Yeah. Yes. Is that, is that bode well for you? No. No. So if we have some stuff on here that we're, oh, wow, this is the best comp. This is the one. This is it. I'm blah, blah, hanging my hat on it. And, and James is like, oh, really? Have you seen that house? No. It's, it was a short sale. It was the, the bedrooms were screwed up. It was red tagged. It had a swimming pool. It had a view. It, had, it was better or it was worse. It doesn't matter. Now he's the expert. Who's going to list this house with me? When your client knows more about the comps than you do, you are in trouble. Okay, so now let's let's take a look at these. Which, by the way, assuming this is what we end up with, a 55 property CMA, not bad. I can live with that. I certainly don't want to bring in 12 houses. I, I am of the opinion more is less. Um, I don't know that I would do a CMA that has 150 houses on it. I'd start tightening things up a little bit. Which, which let's do that, by the way. Remember some of our criteria? We want 200 square. By, by the way, let's review our criteria. <coughs> Active pending, backup, close. We'll talk about maybe expires and a few other things here in a minute. Marina Valley, 17 to 2100 square feet, closing date for six months, right? Let's just suppose we didn't like we wanted more. Okay. Well, expired they're overpriced. Yeah, which is part of it. Correct. And we're gonna to get to that. Absolutely. But let's just for now. And I and by the way, two hundred square feet on either side of this for me I'm comfortable with. Right. Well, let's just for argument's sake say I want to go three hundred square feet on either side. So I'm now gonna to go to sixteen hundred to twenty two hundred. Now, frankly, it didn't change that much. I jumped to 82 properties. Okay? But let, let's pretend for a moment that I was happy with 60. If I could keep this within a 100-foot square footage range, and I still have, um, okay, it's a good example. 19, is for me, is not enough. Now, in theory, these 19 properties are more comparable than the 55 because they're much, much, much closer in square footage to my property, which means I have to do much less, if any, adjustments for square footage, right? But again, I'm gonna throw on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my, my 200 square foot rate range, because again, I kinda like the, I kinda like the um, 55 properties. I'm gonna go, again, let's go back to our results. Um, so this is what we've got. Now let's take a look at what we've got, all right? Now again, help me out, guys. If you're a little more familiar with this and you want to help me, you know, come up with well, something. If you're doing the comps, you should have added the bedrooms, right? If you just Maybe. have no bedrooms there, you're going to get a whole ballpark. Maybe, but 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 good question. Let's pretend for a moment that our pro we said it's 1,900 square feet. Let's pretend we got a four bedroom, 2.5 bath mm -hmm. property. Okay. If I if, if, and let's just let's find one here. Let's let's say that our house is. You ever been in a village? Yeah, one of them in Here's here we go. Let's pretend this is our house, and it's a little small. Um, let's just find. Ooh. Okay, let's take this. Let's pretend Featherbrook. Let's pretend this is a model match to our house. Okay. Forget about the price. Our house is 1,867 square feet, and we said it's a um, four bedroom, three bath, four bedroom, three bath. Okay. This property is a three bedroom, two bath. It's about 90 square feet smaller. Do we throw that out because it's a three bedroom? I don't. No. Do we possibly make an adjustment? Four bedrooms for three bedrooms? Maybe. But if I've got a three bedroom house that's 1,900 square feet and a four bedroom house that's 1,900 square feet, in my opinion, 
Bob may differ, the seller may differ, an appraiser may differ, but I'm going to put more weight on the square footage of that house than I am going to be the bedrooms. Yeah, you've uh, got a big three bedroom and a small four bedroom. There you go. Mm -hmm. Or having said that, more if it's a bedroom. two bedroom, then I'm going to I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be more critical of the, my analysis. Okay, I basically just said a 1,900 square foot bedroom, 1,900 square foot three bedroom and a four bedroom are basically the same. That's I made that statement. I will not make the same statement that an 1,100 square foot three bedroom is the same as an 1,100 square foot two bedroom. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that to be the case. The three bedroom is going to, to be a, in my opinion, a more desirable and in theory a more valuable property mm -hmm. because in my experience, people who are looking for a 1,900 square foot home in some case, in most cases, will not discount it because it's a three bedroom or four bedroom. However, they will discount it if it's two bedroom as opposed to three bedroom. Mm -hmm. Two bedrooms basically don't sell as well mm -hmm. as, as three bedrooms do. Okay, it's kind of a, I mean the two bedroom is the kind of the entry level buyer, maybe one kid, maybe no kids, whatever Six it happens to be. Yeah. The older folks are the real young ones. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they so, get into like one bathroom. Right, once bathroom, you start having any sort of a family or anything like that, you realize that a two bedroom doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, it just doesn't work. So, kids out. <laughs> so I'm not going to focus too much on the three to four. Having said that, I mean, most of what we're looking at, there's only like two or three of them on this entire page that are three bedrooms. So, but, but, but that very well may be important. Okay. There's a, well, let me give you another example. There's a house in Riverside that we sold recently that had, um, it did not have the master bedroom, did not have its own bathroom. Terrible design, mm -hmm. and the the common bathroom for the upstairs, in addition to not having a bathroom in the master, it had no bathtub. Wow! It had two bathrooms. Both of them were stall showers. I wouldn't have bought that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wouldn't have bought that. A lot of people wouldn't have bought that. And yeah, and it was like, wow, was right. What's it going to cost? to reconfigure this house to get this bathroom in the master or what's it going to cost at least to get a bathtub to be honest with you i don't give it personally i could care i i've been taking a bath and i can't remember last time i took a bath but i gotta tell you my wife man oh man okay there's no way we wouldn't have been buying that we're not buying that in fact it's not we're not even not buying it what the hell am i even standing in this house for? <laughs> So, yeah. The girls got the rose buds and the candles. Yeah. All that stuff. Okay, so let's start. Yeah, one more thing. Sure. Uh, you've got three new home sale comps on Caprice. Okay. And would you discount those? Probably so. Yeah. What 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 um, Eric is talking about, and he knows the market. Oh, yeah. We've got some new construction mm -hmm. that has worked its way into our CMA. Mm -hmm. So when we print this out, now again, we may or may not want that to show up. But I will tell you this, if I leave it in, and part of me wants to leave it in, but I want to leave it in with an explanation. Oh, by the way, I just wanted you to know, which again, your seller, oh yeah, that's the new home stuff. Well, this is what the new home stuff is selling for. And your house isn't new. Your house is built in 87, 45. So we have to take a look at that. No, but again, I very well may want to leave it in if what could, for comparable person. Per, and keep in mind, sometimes your comps, you leave them in to show the contrast in, in comparability. Not everything on here is, oh, these are the houses that are exactly like yours. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. These are the houses that are within the market area that you're going to be competing against. These are comparable from a value standpoint. But these, also, but these are comparable from what your buyers are potentially going to be looking at. So I want to be able to explain that to my seller. Put your buyer hat on for a minute. Andrea comes in and says, hey, I want to buy a house in this area. This is the square footage I'm looking for. Well, we already said, if I pull the entire city, I'm going to pull up 60 houses. Then she says, well, wait a minute, I want to be on the north side. Okay, well, now I went down to 30 houses. Well, no, I want to be in 9557 only. Okay, now I went down to... 22 houses. No, I want to be in Sunnymead Ranch only with a little bit of Hidden Springs. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight properties that we're competing. So, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, sometimes you need to put yourself in the mind of a buyer and a few of these properties under construction. Mm -hmm. Would you buy your house before you bought mm -hmm. the new house? And the answer in some cases is yes. Some people don't. They're, oh my God, no interest in buying new construction. I'll never buy a new house. It takes them three years to get the bugs worked out. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Or others are like, oh, are you kidding me? You mean I can buy the brand new one? And, you know, that one's supposed to the 30 year old one? Yeah, I'll take the brand new one all day long. So, as we go through this, we want to analyze. And the, thing, the very first thing I start analyzing is square footage. So, where am I square? Now, again, we've already determined we're within 200 square feet of each side. But then I want to start taking a look at price. And I'm only looking at actives right now. I'm at 250, 265, 270. Got some high flyers. High flyers for me are the higher ones, obviously. Um, 317, 324, 340, 344. I also like to take a look at the red and green arrows. Very interesting on this. The red and green arrows tell us that if there's no arrow, basically means there's our price from day one. This has had a price increase. This has had a price reduction. And it, it, in this particular sample, anyway, We've got a pretty good balance. Some people are raising their prices, some people are lowering their prices. Very interesting. Okay. So based upon the, the active listings only, it's premature to ask this question, what is this house worth? Well, if we discount the new stuff, we've got a 250, 269, 265. 265. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the wish list. I wish someone buys my house at 265 is probably 265. All right, so then let's let's get back to the a little bit better than the wish list. We got one, two, three, four, five, six pendings and a couple backup offers. Again, generally the same square footage. Now again, these are list prices. List prices. They don't publish the sales price. Listed at 221, 250, 264, 269, 269, 2. 80, 245, and 314. Does our 260, are we still as comfortable with our 265 price based upon the list prices that have gone in escrow? Yeah. I'd, okay. I'd say yeah. Derek says yeah. Does anybody think maybe we're, maybe 265 is a little too high right now? It's a little bit. Maybe I'm more comfortable than 250 or something like that. Okay, so now we, again, which by the way, guys, this is a very subjective process, okay? We can all sit back and, and, and have a much different, I'm more, I'm more excited about the market. I think things are crazy. I, 265 is gonna be easy. I don't know, this market scares me. I'm 240. Well, that's two different people looking at the same market with two completely different opinions. One of them's, one of them's probably closer to right than the other. So dang, so there we've got our penny. Now, now let's take a look at the at the, at, the, at the good stuff, so to speak. Let's take a look at the sold. Now again, we have not really done a tremendous amount of analysis past square footage, so we certainly, to do a deeper dive into this, we need to know very specific things about these properties. Very specific, okay? So these are our solds. Um, okay, I guess let's just say from here down. Let's, and it's not uncommon for me to want to do one of these. Let's start. Now the sales make me feel comfortable with 265. Right. Sound good about the 265. Right. Right. But now it all depends on market trend. Where's the market going with those active properties that are on okay. the market that are peaking? Yep. One of the reasons I like to do this is when I get to start look when I start looking at my souls, I, I, I like to have um, and the one liner doesn't give it to me. I like to see my list of sold. Right. When you're just looking at the one liner, you don't get the list of sold. Yeah. Right. So uh, now, granted, we have to look at more information, which also doesn't hurt. Okay. So I'm now seeing a a low flyer. Okay, um, a little smaller than ours, but hey, 175 is 175. Okay, so I'm looking at a photo, which sometimes is meaningless. 
I'm getting myself some, some, some data together. Short sale under approval. So, so now I need to know. So when I'm talking to James about Mendoza, which by the way, this house is literally stone throw, okay, from Village. So I need to know about this, because if anything, he may know about it, if for no other reason, he's maybe been driving by it every time he comes to and from work every day. But again, I want to see this, so I'm just going to start scrolling. I'm basically, I'm just focusing right up here for now on, on, um, on price. Um, 205, 210. Okay, let's make, a, let's make an analysis here for a second. This price sold for more than list, or house sold for more than list. Has that been a common trend in the marketplace? Mm -hmm. It has mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. A little bit less maybe today mm -hmm. than it was seven, nine months ago, mm -hmm. but that's still not an uncommon situation. I also need to be prepared when I'm talking to James about pricing, because is it possible that I, let's suppose, for the moment, we decide that James's house is worth 205, and he decides to list it for 205. Is it possible that a seller could get angry with us if 24 hours later we get an offer in for 210? Mm -hmm. You might think that they'd be happy, mm -hmm. um, but it's possible they're like, what what, 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 what you do, man? You give my house away? You're trying to make a quick commission? Mm -hmm. Trying to make a quick buck? Mm -hmm. Now again, Yes. It's yeah. also possible the BPO came in at two. Uh, possible. Ten. Nice. Sure. So. Possible. Now again, the, the, a lot of the sellers today are more conditioned that multiple offers, so on and so forth. But the market hasn't always been that way. The market has not always been that way. So bringing a property, getting multiple offers in a short window of time above list price is not always a good thing in the eyes of your seller. Now you may say, what's wrong with you, dude? I brought you seven offers and six of them are above list price and you should be happy. You should be taking me, buying me a steak dinner tonight. Sometime, and some of them might. Others may be like, damn agent. All I want to do is make a quick commission. Undersold my house. So you gotta be careful, you gotta know what you're talking well, you about. Can under, you can underprice a house for a bidding war too. Sure. Look at this one. Shorts, okay. All right, well, here you go. HUD property, sold as is, yada, 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 183, 215. Is that, is that common for HUD? Yeah. Yes. Very yeah, common. There was, there was does, a, does he know that? Price war going on there. He may not know that. So we need to talk to him about that. That's why a lot of times, which is why if you're not out in the market talking, it, let, let's just, let's take a look at this. Let's use this. I'm, I'm getting off of the CMA for a second, but I'm talking more prospecting to being professionals in the neighborhood. Is it possible that the people in this neighborhood right across the street or next door, when this thing came up as a foreclosure, is it possible that somehow they were given information that this property was asking 183 with HUD? Possible that they know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it possible that they may look at that information and say, because this, <coughs> this is a pretty nice looking HUD, at least mm -hmm. just based upon yeah. this, I mean, this is a nice looking house. Is it possible that they may say, wow, I thought the market was really doing a lot better, but I guess not. I mean, just 183 is the best we could do. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that this was a, an extreme undervaluation and the property ended up selling for 20%, 25% more and list. Mm -hmm. so that's why we need to be the experts in the neighborhood. When we talk to, when we're in the neighborhood and we're talking to these guys and, there's, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I was thinking about selling, but I saw that HUD across the street for 183. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, time out, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't want to sell because you're worried about that? Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry about it. That house is worth 215,000 bucks. 215? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can get you 215. As a matter of fact, that one's probably going to sell for 215. Well, heck, if I knew I'd get 215, I might list my house today. Mm -hmm. You guys got to know. And then again, we have to tell him, because I don't know how long ago this one closed. Okay, well, it's been... I'm going to close it. 10 to... Okay, well, let's pretend I'm, we're, I'm doing this CMA, and it's 10-10. And it just closed six, seven days before I was out there. He's probably not aware that this house just closed for 215 as opposed to, you know, 183. So, all right, so I want to take a look at that. I'll just go through a couple more of these. Um, Another short pay subject to lender approval. Mm -hmm. This is one reason, frankly, why the short pay business and we as agents mm -hmm. are getting beat up. Yeah. Because we're for good reason, mm -hmm. but maybe not so good reason. We're doing too much of this. Mm 
Right. We're listing low. Right. That's a short sale. We don't care. Seller doesn't care. And nobody cares. Mm -hmm. The banks have said nobody seems to care. That's why this um, whole auction.com thing is, is becoming more and more prevalent. We have we have damaged ourselves as a profession and an industry because we've seen so much of that. Okay. okay. That's just for full price. Um, Wow. Above. Um, this is the first one. Excuse me. This is the first one, I think, that we've seen that's actually sold for below this price, and we've gone through five or six. This is just information, guys. This is just stuff that I'm taking a look at, information-wise. And there was another one, by the way. Uh, another one overbid. Again, the second one sold for less than less. Above. At. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so now I, I'm, I'm looking through this. Okay, it is nice, but this is a much superior property. Yeah, it's over you know? on the other side. It's much superior property. Now I know that. Right. I'm not liking my 265 as much as I was a minute or so ago, but wait a minute. When did it close? 10 10. Wow. Well, what's happened since 1010? Up or down? Up. Uh, uh, so maybe I'm being a little better at 265. Only because this is a little older. All right, let's 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 revise. What are we at? 55, 55 properties. Let's let's do a revision. Now again, this probably is not enough, but we're going to find out. Are these comps going to be a little better than the comps we were just looking at? Yeah. Went to 25. Go back to my results. I specifically want to, specifically want to, everything on this is going to be exactly the same except for the solds. Um, okay, since, and, you know, and, and now what? I'm not not liking this. The double negative, huh? Uh, um, I, I don't hate this. I have still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I still have nine solds, but these solds are more valuable to me than the solds we were just looking at because all of these have closed in the last 66 days, right? So now let's take a different. Let's do the same thing we were just doing. Let's go back. Market trend. Who said that, Robert? Market trend. Is the market trending a little differently since January than it was um, back in um, September? Back in September. Let's, yes. let's find our first. Let's find our. Well, for, actually, let's take a look at the pending first. Um, okay, so we've still got our pending. Okay. Okay. I, I know Eric's probably and Shirley may be a little more familiar with this area than others. This is pretty comparable. Mm -hmm. A little different architectural stuff. It's a very comparable property. Dead grass, that's telling me something. Listed for 221. Um, a little bit larger in square footage. Okay. It, it, it's a HUD. Okay. So, which means that I could sell for 260. Because that's how that's all that does their stuff. So all that stuff we need, we need to bear in mind. Pinefield, very comparable. Listed for 250 in escrow. Um, 264. Featherbrook, that was the one we kind of said was our example. Um, Springdale, this is um, Springdale's Hidden Springs. Okay, mm -hmm. you didn't know that, 269. Okay, let's get to our sales. Okay, so I've got a 250. 250. 275. 265. 270. Ooh, high flyer. Wow. Okay. They're not selling at a, as high as above this right. price anymore. But are these houses comparable? No. Mm -hmm. They're really not. They're not superior. comparable to ours. Superior. Superior. They're, they're very superior. I tell you what is comparable to ours, and the trend is, 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 is to my mind, is pretty obvious. This 248 to 270 range. Can we, if we were doing an appraisal today, 
and we tightened this up. Because they, by the way, if they find comps that are 45 days old, are they going to prefer to use them as opposed to the ones that are six months old? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in this particular market, that works to our advantage. Mm -hmm. We don't want, which is why I tightened up the search. I don't want to give James or anybody for that matter comps that are four, five, six months old if my values have been appreciating. And if I do give him those values, the only reason I want to give him those values is to illustrate that values have done what? Have trended up. Now let's pretend we're on the flip side of the market. Let's pretend this is 2007 or 2008 and we were selling it for 250 and then it was 245 and it was 240. Now in that particular case, we'd love to be able to trick the appraiser and say, look at that older comp. Well, appraisers, especially today, there are no, there are no mood to be tricked, okay? So that they want current, recent comps. I know you guys are, are, are probably bored to death of, of seeing, seeing our, our charts, but this is another thing you need to have in your, um, you know, I, I don't do this stuff just for my own amusement, guys. And quite honestly, I don't even do it for your amusement. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this stuff so that you have some tools and ammunition in your, in your toolkit to take out on your listing presentation. And um, By the way, I haven't ran February. Maybe if you guys want to stick along a little bit longer after the meeting, we'll run February. I'd like to have, number one, I need to know this, and I need to have this information in my presentation, and most of you in this room have seen this before, but this is Merino Valley median price. We were looking at comps back in November or October. Well, things have changed. Now, granted, this is the entire city, but this shows a trend of positive improvement from a standpoint of property values. So when I now go back to here, and I'm looking at this, now, now th this ain't going to happen, and it's not going to happen because these properties on Siena are not comparable to our village, period. And I need to be able to tell James and explain to him why. But frankly, these are. So, we could go into a lot deeper dive on this, but right now, this is kind of where I'm at. I'm looking at comps that certainly justify 265, even a 270. Square footage is a little higher, though. We've got about 100 square feet higher than our 1,900 square feet. So, again, I don't know whether you know um, Eric is good or lucky, but that 255 number he, or 265 number he threw out, I'm certainly not uncomfortable in a 265. Quite honestly, I'm not even, even though these houses are larger, I'm not uncomfortable with that either. Now, again, we haven't talked about condition or anything like that yet. So let's go back up to the, the actives. So this is my competition, 250 to whatever, 65, 269, 270, um, new construction, new construction. So I'm... So our, if we came on the market today at 270, we would be right about in the, still somewhat in the sweet spot. Um, and those two, the first two were short sales, so. Which is, okay. So now we got to start digging deeper. I'm not going to go through every one of these because it just, and again, it, by the way, these take a little bit of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thinking, I mean, can, could we pull together, okay, we have, an, we have an appointment in a half hour. Could we do it? Yeah. Yeah. Are we prepared? Probably not. If you've never been in the neighborhood, you don't know anything about it, no. If it's in your farm, or this isn't a location where you've already done your homework and you've been out previewing and previewing and previewing, you still might not be as completely prepared as you need to be, but um, you may be better than the average guy just going in blind. The problem is, I don't know about you guys, which by the way, I'm going to say this and I'm going to take it back. Nobody likes to go out on these appointments to get embarrassed, right? No. Unfortunately, that's the main reason why a lot of you never go out on appointments. <laughs> okay? So, as much as we don't like to get embarrassed, um, a little of, last I checked, nobody dies of embarrassment. So, if I had a choice, 
and I said, I'm not going to go on the appointment because I don't want to look like an idiot. Or I think I'll go on the appointment, I might look like an idiot, but I'm going to learn something along the way. As much as it pains me to say, go on the appointment. And quite honestly, when you make yourself look like an idiot, you also make me look like an idiot. I'm not really liking that too much. But the bottom line is, you guys are never going to be perfect at this. You've got to go out and practice this stuff. And unfortunately, sometimes that means practicing in front of the client and embarrassing yourself. However, there's a lot of things we can do, this class is one of them, to minimize the opportunity for you to embarrass yourself. But getting, again, back to Eric's point, now we need to know about all of these properties. So if I'm going through, let's just, actually, let's just do a few, tell you some stuff to look for. Okay, so I've got my nice, oh, by the way, we haven't talked about this. Are there, are there some special things about these comps that our property either does or does not have. Pool. How much is a pool worth? Maybe nothing. <coughs> maybe, maybe ten. Did someone say ten? Could be there. Could, could be could be neutral. What if has a crack? Could be negative. <laughs> you know, I know lots of people who have spent eighty, ninety thousand dollars on their swimming pool. If they sold their house today, they'd be lucky to get maybe twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Lucky. Pools are expensive. Yeah. They're a pain in the butt. <laughs> they cost you in electricity. They cost you in chemicals. They cost you in time unless you hire someone to do it. Does your does your current house have a pool? Mine? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to have a house without a pool. There we go. Nice jacuzzi. Well, let, let, let's, let's play both sides of the fence with this. Okay? Let's play both sides of the fence for this for a minute. James's house does not have a pool. Okay? Now, I very well may want to exclude pool homes from my search. Okay? But then again, I may not. But I also want to be prepared to sit back and say, oh, by the way, this house has a pool and it's sold for 270 It's pretty much identical to yours, and yours doesn't. We probably need to make a downward adjustment in that particular area. But not a lot. Okay? Pools are not worth. You know, and it's impossible to say 5,000, 10,000, 0, 30,000. It depends on what's been done, hardscape and the type of pool and all the rest of this nonsense. Um, but let's suppose this property does have a pool and this one doesn't. Well, now you have to have the reverse argument. Well, geez, Lance, I, I, I've got $50,000 into this pool in this backyard. Well, 50,000 is an average pool. Okay. You want a pool that. If, if you're going to talk about a pool, you need one with the rocks, with the slide, okay. uh, with the uh, jacuzzi in the little cave. Then now you're talking about a pool, but a fifty thousand dollar pool is just an average pool. It's a pool with ground water in it. So, okay. yeah. But irrespective of how much they spent, whether they got the cheapest of the cheap and spent twenty grand, or whether they spent one hundred and twenty grand, when James tells me. I've, sp I've got $60,000 into my pool, therefore my house is worth three thirty dollars as opposed to two seventy. dollars Our response normally is, have you enjoyed your swimming pool while you own the house? <laughs> 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 huh? Did you get $60,000 worth of enjoyment? Right, because that's what this is all about. Um, I'm not saying that you're not going to get anything out of it, but I hope you've enjoyed your swimming pool while you've lived here. Because the reality is I could pull up pool homes and now we're comparing pool to pool. Mm -hmm. And you're going to realize that houses without a pool compared to houses with a pool do not have a $30,000, dollars $60,000 gap. Especially in this price range. Okay? When we start getting into custom homes, multi-million dollar houses, okay, maybe the pool, maybe the view, maybe the super rock waterfall. I had a client in, um, in Riverside over off of um, um, Overlook. This guy had a $250,000 pool and a, and a, and a $500,000 lake. Okay, had a half a million dollars in this, in this lake. With, it wasn't, you couldn't swim in it, but this thing had water features and falls and golf course type stuff. And, and you talking about the electric bill? I have no idea. Did what you it, see that HUD repo that was up, up uh, Paris that uh, had the uh, the lake in the back? Oh, well, did that go HUD repo? Yeah, and well, what no, helped wow. is the people who bought it 
filled it up. Oh, that's too bad. But it had a it had a little thing in the middle of the yeah. lake with the, oh, with yeah. the water coming Actually, out. Actually, that that house used to be owned by Tom Hardy, yeah. who was good. You know, probably, you know Tom. You've been around a long time. That used to be Tom's house. I used to go up there and and you know drink lemonade by the swimming pool. <laughs> that, that or by the lake twenty five years ago. So, and then, yeah, interesting house. But again. Now, on that particular property, with that particular thing, this was a multi-million dollar property. Somebody in that particular, now again, I'm telling you he had $700,000 into these water features. Okay? Did he get $700,000 back? No. I don't think so, but I don't know what he got back because when you're selling a house for $3 million, how much of it is the lake and how much of it is the house? And, you know, you're an animal. Well, thirty, forty thousand dollars when you're talking three million is nothing. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Which, is, but we're not. What we're in a, which is why I bring it up because mm -hmm. we're not in that category. Okay, I sold a house about nine months ago in um, San Juan Capistrano for one point one million dollars. The house was a teardown. Yeah. See. The owner of that house, yeah. he bought it paid cash. The buyer of that house is still not done. But he's going to spend two million dollars rebuilding this house. I haven't been up there in months. Best I can tell, if when I pull up to the house, the house that I sold him will not be there, mm -hmm. or maybe there'll be two walls. And he'll come out. Remember that wall and that wall. That's the only thing that's left. Everything else will come. It's not a teardown. <laughs> not a crack. Not a teardown. So again, it's all relative when you start talking in these values. But for our purposes. Not a lot of value on a swimming pool. So again, and I, I don't know, maybe I think maybe Rob was saying that's a good one. I remember that. It, it, that's one of those lines, so to speak, that you when you're sitting back say, well, I, I hope you enjoyed your pool. Same thing with landscaping. Um, you get the super, super, super nice house, and they've got fifty thousand dollars worth of landscaping. You know, five thousand dollar palm trees and ten thousand dollar palm trees. Do you get value for that? Not much, if anything. And the appraisals will be the first one to tell you. Oh, you, you, you go away for six months and you don't water it, and I got nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. you, 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 or your trees get, palm trees around here are notorious for getting like the fungus palm tree disease, mm -hmm. and it kills your palm trees. You sit back and say, my buddy's got this property, beautiful property. It's one of those, those date palms, all sorts of different names. He points to this tree, he says, you know, that, that tree's. Fifteen thousand dollars, and he's got twenty of them. On a, yeah, for a palm tree. The types of type you see them like in casinos and stuff. In those big That's sagos. Crazy. I don't know what they are. I don't know about them. Not the sago. Is that what you said? Those damn little sago things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are expensive too. How do I know that? I had one. I had one in a in a portable pot. The thing was sure. was about this big. Was up in my front yard. I came out of my house, this is probably 15 years ago, <laughs> and I look and I see like this drag of dirt. <laughs> and I'm looking at it like, what the hell is this? And then someone told me, oh, you had a sago palm, those are expensive. Mm -hmm. What well, was there when I bought the house? Well, somebody thought, I don't know, it was like a $400 palm tree, I guess, but it was, it was, it was little well, enough. Sagos that it was, are nice because if you get a female sago, they, they mm -hmm. grow out the other little sagos that you could cut off mm -hmm. and plant, and they'll grow. Well, I, I never looked under the leaves to see if mine was male or female. <laughs> 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 you can really tell if it's a male sago. Oh, <laughs> Alright, that's getting to be a long day. Okay, but at any rate, when you're looking at nice, nice soft skate, you know, beautiful flowing big yards with grass and palm trees and all the rest of it, you got to be careful. Look at a lot of value in that. Okay. Does it make the house sell faster? Does does the absolutely? Yes. You can't. It's kind of like the pool conversation. If we're looking at a two hundred seventy thousand dollar property, and James is telling me, "Well, I've got fifty thousand dollars in trees," I'm like, oh, dude, you know what? You're gonna you're gonna be the premium house on the block. We're probably gonna get you more than anybody else, but I can't get you fifty thousand dollars because of these palm trees. Case in point, guy talked about selling this house, and I was said, okay, well, we need to come in and enhance the curb appeal a little bit. Yep. You've got chipping paint all around the thing here. You need to put some water on the grass and get it green again. It's, he lay, he painted in and out, laid new sod front and back, Indian and Love cactus, yep. and now he wants the same price that uh, you get up in Sunny Meat Ranch right. and get in Springs. Right. But it's not... So how much money did he spend? 
I don't know what the dollar. Twenty-four thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe? yeah. Well, you know that curb appeal is is it. it yeah. Is, uh, I could if I can get you in the house. Yeah. I got the house sold. Right. Yeah. But if the house looks like crap on the yeah, outside, exactly. I can't get you in there. That's right. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. That's right. I tell the people by an emotion. I want people to drive up here and say, "Oh wow, yep. yeah, I want to start my family well, home." Well, and, that, and that, that's an interesting conversation. Let, let me let's talk about this oh, new construction. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm with you because you're going to segue right into right into into that that that. I'm going to piggyback on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are new construction. Okay, so we need to be we need to say hey. Yeah, I know it's 320. It's a brand new house, new construction. Sorry, it doesn't work. Getting back to, to Shirley's point and Bob's point, let's just use this one. This, this looks nice. Okay, this is a nice looking house. Somebody's going to pull up to this house. It's in the search. They're not going to not want to go in. They're my double negative again. Okay? They're going to take a look at that and say, let's go in. Then you take a look at the house with the dead grass, oil stains all over the driveways, the, the garage doors off the hinges. But generally speaking, the house itself, the structure, the core is good. Yeah. But if they would just spend 2000 bucks, I tell you, I mean, that is the best money spent ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, Fannie Mae doesn't do this as much as they used to, but back in the day when there was a lot of Fannie Freddie foreclosures out there, they would take the house that was a mess, I mean a mess, and they'd spend normally between four and $7,000 Grass would be green, new interior paint, new carpet, cheapest paint you could buy, cheapest carpet you could buy, FHA base grade, 26 ounce carpeting, mm -hmm. the cheapest Whirlpool stove, dishwasher, microwave, or not even the microwave, the vent hood, yeah. the cheapest you could buy, but man, mm -hmm. the buyers walked yeah. around. Yeah. And when we drove up, in many cases, this is a foreclosure, the landscaping was one of the nicest properties on the block. Mm -hmm. all, new. all brand new, beautiful. And you know, you'd sit back and say, oh, so we got them hooked. The buyers would walk in, purely emotional. <gasps> a new carpet. <gasps> a new stove. Now, if they had spent any time, I mean, you could walk on the carpet. They got, is there a pattern? <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, you got and, and by the way, that carpet, I mean, God forbid, you didn't even have to have kids. If it was just a husband and wife neat neck, mm -hmm. 12 months later you went over to that house and it was worn out. Right. I mean, it was flat as a pancake. Right. It was the cheapest possible carpet that you could possibly get. But Fannie Mae knew they'd spend five, six, seven thousand dollars on this fluff and buff, mm -hmm. and they would instead of selling the house for like okay, let's say it was worth 150, mm -hmm. well with dead grass and, and crappy carpet mm -hmm. and smelling like dog and all the rest of that, they'd be lucky to get 134. Mm -hmm. Okay. They'd spend five grand on it and they'd get 150. Right? So when I'm talking to James, if your property falls into one of those categories, it, it literally is one of those things. Hey, I could get you, let's just go back a comp or two. I mean, we're getting a little bit into the tall grass here, but I could get you 270. But, man, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. landscaping. You got to get these cars out of the driveway. You got to clean out the garage. You got to get the dog crap off the lawn, off the, off the lawn, off the living room car drive. <laughs> okay. I mean, don't you can't. like those pictures though? That are green grass and the house looks painted when you show up. The grass is dead. Oh yeah. 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 Don't, like by the way, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. If that's your if that's your listing, don't don't do that. Don't, don't take oh, up people there. do they, they what they do is they go back to an older listing where the house looks nice to, exactly. and they still or the picture. Google Street View pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. You're just, you're just you know, well, you're, you know you're just uh, new yourself. houses they color it in. They do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, let, let's give you another. I think I used this example a week or so ago. Let's see how long it takes see, us to find. That out. looks fake. Actually, I don't think that is a real. Picture. I think this is this is this picture here. That's fake. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the that's, 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 that's the model. Yeah, yeah. That's the model. Yeah. But, let me yeah. Like that. but you got to tell them that that's a fake picture. I get a lot of people that will e email me these things. And, <laughs> okay, and I got to. This, this is a good example. We use. I think we talked about this a week or so ago in a different class. Um, this is a nice house. Are they doing themselves any justice with this photograph? No. It's dark. It's got cars. Three, the there's three cars on the driveway. You got a, a car, a truck, and a car. Okay. Um, 
Now, generally speaking, it looks like maybe this house isn't really the grass looks reasonably green, the palm trees are trimmed, or whatever. But, but a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of, I mean, I'm talking some silly stuff, too. You know, coil up the hose, you know, at the front porch. Pick up the newspapers, you know. If you don't have a pressure washer, how about just take a hose to the front, knock the spider webs off, something to clean it up. Okay, so again, getting, getting, back, to, getting back to the values on this, I, um, I would be very comfortable. And again, you know, Eric kind of blew the suspense on this because I'm going to pretty much agree with his number. <laughs> I, I think at this price on this at 165, 170 is a reasonable price today. The active support it, the comps, the sole comps support it. Now, having said that, now we're sitting back and we're in a little different market environment. James has finally decided he's thinking about interested in selling his house. I have some additional data. What is this? What is this telling me? What is the trend here? Now we got to be. This could be dangerous, but you got to take it for what it's worth. The trend is moving upward. Are we uncomfortable with a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar list price? Hundred and eighty thousand dollar list price. At what point? Two, at what point? Two seventy-five. Excuse me. Two. At what point do we become uncomfortable with? With a list price, two, two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Okay, that's, you, you breached my comfort level before that, but two ninety nine, <laughs> two eighty nine, two seven, whatever it is. Okay. So this this is the conversation when two eighty five. This is the conversation that I would have with my seller when we're talking. I'm saying, okay, this is the deal. Today it appears as though this property is going to appraise for. 265, 270. Feeling pretty good about that. Don't want to leave any money on the table. Okay? Um, now, normally, a seller already, sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you'll come in and be like, oh my God, really? I can get that much? Great. You think that's what I should listen for? Great. Let's go. So, boom, 270 and you're one and done. But that's normally, that's not exactly how it works. It's like, well, I was really hoping I could get 280. Now, if he tells me 280, I'm done. I mean, I mean, I'm done in a good way. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. Okay, but I would have the following conversation. It would be a brief one. James, this is the deal. Given the market trend, given this chart, given what we're looking at over here, I'm very comfortable listing your house for two hundred eighty thousand dollars. Let's let's play the sales game just a little bit. Let's agree on two seventy nine nine. Get us just below that. And by the way, there's a reason you do that. It's not just Walmart pricing. If an agent comes into the MLS and says, give me properties less than 280, well, then the 279.99 is going to show up. The 280 will not. Okay? So at any rate, and it's, sellers will have no problem with that. 280, 279.99, whatever. Same thing. Um, but I tell you, what, let's do this. Can we agree if we don't get any activity, we don't get any, any action within the next 30 days, that we're going to come down to 274.9? Most sellers, number one, they'll give you an answer, and the answer is very telling. The answer is yes, I'm with you, I'm a motivated seller, or the answer is no, I have to have 280. Well, in that case, then again, you know. Now again, we have to make a decision. Are we still comfortable with the 280, knowing at least today he says it's 280 or, or bust? Well, I'm probably okay with that, given this chart, given the time of the year, okay? Given the time of the year where we seem to be in a market that's building, can anybody feel a little shift in the marketplace the last month or so? I sure as heck can feel it. It's positive. Now, if we were having this discussion in November, I was feeling a shift and it wasn't positive. It was a stuck. What is, oh boy, having a little bit of a challenge. But this time of the year, I'm okay with it. Now, if he's at 290 or 305, now I'm probably, eh. Not feeling, but again, if I can get buy-in from James, and if that buy-in is, yeah, okay, yeah, let's do it. If, I, if it doesn't sell in 30 days, I'm going to go here. If it doesn't sell in 30 days, I'm going to go here. If it doesn't sell in 30 days, I'm going to go here. Which, by the way, everybody in this room needs to change your mindset. Who's been doing this for more than 10 years? Yeah. A couple, three of us, okay? Selling a house with 15 offers in a week is not how this business is supposed to work, okay? 
Listing, I was talking with Drew, and Drew has enough experience to know better, but I was Drew and I were talking, driving somewhere yesterday or the day before actually, and he's commenting on, we, we've been getting more listings, we've been getting more Fannie listings, and we've got some of our property management clients have listed with us, and Drew is, 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 is not panicking, but he's expressing concern that there's not a lot of activity on our listings that we've had listed for three weeks. Okay? So, I'm like, it, it is funny. But, but again, we have been so conditioned over the last several years, if you don't get 15 offers in in the first weekend, or if you don't have the thing in escrow within 30 days, something's wrong. And, you know, and maybe something is wrong. Maybe we need to have a price reduction discussion. Um, having said that, in the old days, there was a reason why your broker would say, I need you to go out, and I don't want you to take any listings less than six months. The reason behind that was that sometimes it would take you six months to sell the damn house. Mm -hmm. Nothing sold in the first 30 days. Right. And that gets back to what I was saying. For some of you that got lost in the conversation earlier that said, my seller could get mad at me. If I listed something, I had multiple offers, and I sold it above full price very quickly. Well, back in the old days, prior to this most recent cycle, they would get mad at you because you never sold anything. If you had offers that came in within the first couple of weeks, mm -hmm. the seller would look at you like, what are you doing, man? Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting you. What? I got a full price offer? I've only been on the market for, for two weeks. That, that was unusual mm -hmm. 10 years ago, okay? Now again, I have no idea what the market, I mean, now, I mean, let's face it, if we're to, to use Drew as a, as a barometer, if we don't have an offer in at price within a couple, three weeks, it's broken, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, which is gonna be interesting. One thing that I, I matter of fact, let's, let's, let's look at something. By the way, this is still in line with our this is still in line with our, our, CRL, our CMA price setting thing. Let me take some stuff out of here. Which is another reason why I really like to have my computer in front of my client. Because depending upon, by the way, if I'm going through this and I've got them, there's no reason. If I have them in the first 15 minutes of the listing presentation, we're done, baby. We're done. We're shutting it down. Yeah, Busting sorry. out the pen and, and oh, it looks like you're ready to go. Uh, it seems like you've heard enough. <laughs> Let me get an initial from you right there. Did you see that? Okay, Isn't it amazing? You ready to go? Let me just get an initial from you right there. It's just right there. <laughs> oh, and I need a and I need a full signature from you. It's just a signature, the whole thing. <laughs> Don't forget your middle initial. <laughs> it is amazing what happens when you hand somebody a pen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even the people who absolutely are completely resistant to it, it's it's like it's kryptonite to Superman. Okay. And and if they're not ready. If they're not ready, you're going to know it. Mm -hmm. I thought I had them. I'm 15 minutes in, and if I do this, don't don't pick it up. Just if I'm getting that, then I know. Mm -hmm. Now, but sometimes I might pull it back too quick. Mm -hmm. So I got I got to have my my spidey senses have to be tingling. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> sometimes if I hold it a little bit longer, no, no, right right there. <laughs> well, what they take, they take the but, 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 unfortunately, this is why I talked about getting embarrassed and afraid to go out on the appointment. There are way too many of us, way, 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 way too many of us that are terrified to do that. Yeah. Terrified that you get what? Terrified that they're, they're not going to sign. God forbid I ask you to sign. I'm just going to sit here, I'm going to keep on talking until he jumps out of his chair and says, all right, where do I sign? Okay, there's too many agents that literally will wait for James to tell me I've had enough. And you know, people are pretty polite. My first listing presentation was three hours long. I left that appointment, I never even asked them to sign the paperwork. I was 19 years old. 
I never asked him to sign the paperwork. I talked just as much then as I do now. <laughs> I was terrified. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. They might have been ready to list with me. They might not. We'll never know because I never said, I think maybe I've gone through my entire presentation. Have you heard enough? If so, all I need you to do is just put an initial for you right there. I never, I just didn't know. Having said that, now if I'm getting the, that he's, he's, he's not ready, then I, and maybe I come back to my computer. Maybe I, and by the way, too much information can sometimes be too much information. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what I wanted to do, active. What am I missing? Oh, I got my map. Let's clear the map. That's all we have is a 60? Yeah. Results? 60 actives. Okay, I want to, I'm looking for arrows. So now I'm trying to get a trend. What's going on with the market? And honestly, and let's 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 sort this by price. Um, how come that didn't sort by price? There we go. And I want to go from low to high. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Um, so I'm sorting from low to high. Okay. Honestly, to my surprise, and actually, this is very interesting. This is a, James. This is exciting. <laughs> I am excited. Okay. And this is why I'm excited. There's 60 properties that are on the market. One of the things, up until about a year ago, you never, ever, ever, ever saw, or not even that, up until about six months ago, you never saw any red arrows. Everything was either that or going up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. Now, we do have a couple of red arrows. Those red arrows are, are telling me a couple of things. They're either telling me that the market got a little too hot, people are getting a little too aggressive and having to bring their price down. Having said that, we see very few. One, two, three, I see four, is that it? Four in the whole, four, whatever. Let's say there's 10. And I don't have all of them here. I, got, I only have 50 of the 50 of the 100. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we got, let's just say, 12, 14 red arrows. And it seems like most of them are in the higher price ranges, by the way. Is that shocking? Not shocking. Now, I don't see a lot of green arrows. These people, for whatever reason, decided to raise their price. But what I also see is I see a lot of properties that have come onto the market with no price change, which may also tell me something, which I want to find out right now. And by the way, don't guess at this. You need to know the answers before you do this in front of your client. Where's my list date at? List date. 01 slash 01 slash 14 plus. Wow. Two-thirds, th two two-thirds of the listings taken that are on the market today have been taken in the last 60 days. I like that. I like that a lot. Because what that tells me is that the, the properties that are coming on the market, now let's take a look at these prices. No, not many. Now again, but we've got some reductions. This is telling me that I've got some motivated folks. They're, they're doing what I just <coughs> talked to James about. We'll list for 280 if it doesn't sell in 30 days. Can you go to 275? Yes. Fair. Okay. Yeah, because most of them where it says the price reductions are just between like 30 and 45 days. There you go. Oh, but yeah, you've got your days on market over here. Okay. So, but I like that. I, I am in, now again, it's 60 properties on the market, a lot. And again, we're still have our, 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 we still have our square footage criteria. We're still between whatever we said, 17 and 21 square feet. But going through this process, in front of the seller can be extremely helpful because there's only so much that you can print out, okay? And, and it doesn't always tell the story, okay? So you've got to be able to sit down, and then again, now I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to give me the, mm -hmm. give me the clue, and then we pass. Like a jaguar. <laughs> Shell. Okay, let's do, let's do a different one real quick. So we're going to, we will be out here at three in case you were wondering. Okay, we've got about 20 minutes. Let's take a little different property. Let's go... Let's just, let's go back to our criteria. Let's try something a little harder. Um, let me take the square footage out for a minute. Anybody have something there that's real life they're trying to comp that they're struggling with? A weird property? Nothing? Okay, all right, then I'll, I'll, I'll find them. Okay, let's go. a half acre on the east end of town? Yeah. my house. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, half acre east end of town. Yeah. Okay, so let's, so, so east end, I don't know if you're northeast or southeast, but now it doesn't matter. So let's let's go back. We've got our active. 
I took my square footage out. I'm up to 201 active. I must have something else stuck in here now. Oh, I have my list date, so I'm going to take that out. Okay, so where's our lot size at? Where's lot size? Lot size. Okay, you need to be very careful with lot size. Uh, so what I, what I mean by that is be careful because sometimes agents don't know what they're doing. Okay, so you put in a half acre, you put in you know 22,000 square feet, you put in whatever it happens to be. Sometimes it doesn't get done exactly right. So I'm going to say lot size. How does this work now? Square feet acre. Okay, well maybe this is a little bit easier now than it was. So I'll click acre and I'll do 0.5 plus. We've got 11 properties. Okay. Now, but that also gives me, is your house exactly half acre? -ish? No, it's just under. Just under, okay. Well, this gives me what? This gives me the two, three, four, five acres. Yeah, so I don't want that. Yeah. So that doesn't work. So how about we do 0.3 to 0.77. Okay. I got 25. All right. I'm a little bit more respectful. But the problem with the 0.3s, it's entirely possible all those point threes are regular single family residential properties. I don't know if yours is or not, but I'm, let's pretend it's not. It's a little more rural. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't really want that. So, but this is what I got. So let's take a look at the map. Okay. Well, no, nope. maybe. No, no, no. Definitely not. No. Maybe. Okay. So if I'm east end. What do I have? I have maybe five. Mm -hmm. What is that? Redlands Boulevard? Redlands. Yeah. Yeah. Redlands. yeah. They got a lot of half acre acre. Okay. So which is kind of what we were going for. Yeah. So let's 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 dial this in. So we well, actually be... north of the sixty, those are probably acres. All right. All right, fair enough. Well, we're taking everything to the east of Marino Beach, tag a little bit more. So now I go to the five. Okay, so let's go back to our criteria. Okay, so we got my five properties. Let's add the pendings. Three more. Let's throw in the backups. One more. Throw in the closed. Don't get too excited. That's the whole neighborhood. Zero one slash zero one. I'm tightening it up. Okay. I'm going for the gold here. Um, we're at eight, fourteen plus five. Okay. All right. Well, and and and, and that's not bad. So given the previous search, doing nothing else, the previous search, I said, you know, I like 50, 60, 70. With this type of property on the east end, getting 14 total might be the best you can do. Okay? So let's go back up and take a look at the let's take a look at the map. Okay, so oops. So this is what we've got. Um, and, and, and again, is this going to be comparable to that? No. No. And it's not, I think Bob said something north side. Yeah, north yeah. of the 60, they're a lot better than south of the 60. They are. Right. In that area. Generally, but you also have some newer construction in here. <coughs> yeah. Um, this is kind of super old. Yeah. Well, not super old, but older. And some of Flows those aren't. If that's Alessandro, yeah. some of those are uh, not even half an acre. They're better. Yeah. Well, we said, in theory, assuming we did it right, we said 0.3 to 0.7. Yeah. Okay. But this is this is a much tougher a much tougher nut to crack. So when we come up to are we here? Let's go back to our results. Okay, now and again we haven't put in anything other than um, the lot size. So let's just pretend that the house we're trying to comp is 2,000 square feet. Well, that's not going to help us too much. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay, so now well, these are probably too right. So we've got maybe six or seven that are within that range without having to do huge adjustments. I mean, you don't want to use a, but you might have to. But a, a 1,600 square foot house on a half acre to comp a 3,000 square foot house on a half acre. Now, if, the, if they're truly half acres in comparable neighborhoods, okay, but making a square footage adjustment for a house that's twice as big, it's tough. Tough nut. So these these are the ones. Even for me, I mean, I don't have magic answers for these. These properties just you just ugh, it just drives you nuts, and you, and you just hope that somewhere in here you can make some sense out of what is a half acre property on the east end of town 
um, going to bring. And then that, then you get to add in all the fun stuff. Well, wait a minute, we want horses. It's got to have horses. And then sometimes, sometimes that'll help you, and sometimes that'll be the kiss of death. Um, where's where's my horse at? I think that whole area is horse lot. area. No, not all of it. Where is it? L O T lot. Lots of lots for horses. Yeah, this is weird. Where is it? Here, lot features. Okay, now scroll down. <laughs> no, go into lot and scroll oh, down oh, to horse. Uh, Ah, you get the blueprint of the day. <laughs> and you just blanked our series. I know. I'm married to a cowboy. And I'm not going to say. Okay. So, nobody puts it in. You know? Well, then that's another problem. That's true. Do they put it And if they did put it in, is it accurate? Let me, let me take that back. It's not all horse property, but it's horse area. Okay. Yeah. 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 Some of the horse properties. Well, I know that. I, I live over there, and Eric stays over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's take our map off here for a minute, though. Let's let's because there's this is this is where. Oops, clear. Now again, we're going to go bananas. Where our numbers going to? Okay. How come it didn't change? Um, <laughs> nobody, nobody put horse property. Well, we do. Nobody put horse property. Apparently, nobody's using that feature. Okay, now. I think some property improved. Yeah. <laughs> Some agents might be concerned about putting that in the MLX in case oh, they're wrong. Yeah. Oh, in case they didn't want the liability of it. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nothing. Okay. How do I get rid of it? Just say control. Okay. All right. Let me go back to my map, though. Now we're not just east end. We're all over the place. But again, just for illustration, we're not going to be able to completely do what we want. But let's say we're trying to comp this. And it is an acre and a half of horse property with a 3,000 square foot lot. And we're trying to stay, 3,000 square foot out, and we're trying to stay over here, and there's nothing else. And then I come up here, and I find this house that's, how many miles? Probably, what, six miles away? Maybe more? Now, again, maybe this doesn't quite work as a $900,000 listing. But let's, again, pretend for a moment that this is the most comparable property to what we're trying to sell. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, that's all you got. Now, that's also, per and this is active, by the way. You know, I don't know the last time we sold a house in Ringa Valley for $900,000, but I can, I can tell you real quick. That's much different than that area. Well, it is much different. Yes, it but, is. But, but, which is why this is very problematic. But if I'm looking for, if I have nothing, at least I could sit back and say, okay, James, I've got nothing. The closest thing I have in the entire city to yours, which is not the same, it is very different, is a similar house six miles away up at the top of Pigeon Pass. Similar lot size, similar this, similar than that. To be honest with you, appraisers are going to have a hell of a time with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hell of a time. Okay? But th let's have a different discussion. Well, you got houses north of that. In the canyon there, that are million dollar half acre houses. Up in Ritchie Canyon? Well, yeah, up into there. Okay. I won't show because he's up in the valley. Which right. would be Redlands, I guess. And well, we do. Okay, well, well let's use that as an example. Are we better? Great example. Are we better off finding a similar property in San Mateo, which is not Marina Valley, this is unincorporated Riverside County? Or this property over here, and I. That's my different opinion, too. Huh? San Mateo Canyon is much different Absolutely. than that area. Well, it is, but but my question, and I and I'm just posing the question. I don't know that I have the answer. Yeah. Is a property that's up here in San Mateo that's very similar a better comp than this one? And I would think maybe yes. Maybe. 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 Very subjective. It depends on the. Yeah, that's right. Itself. Send the appraisal yeah, so I can get a better comp. Maybe. Okay. But I think what the appraiser would do, he would actually compare that property to, to residential homes in that area and make adjustments. And make adjustments. Right. But that does, but that can kill you. That can kill you. So the, and again, I, I, I'm telling you, these are tough. Okay. These are the tough ones. But just another little sidebar, just because we ran across this by accident, we've got a 800, 900 thousand dollar listing here. So let's pretend we're talking to, to James as our seller. And I want to sit back and I say, and again, I want to, you know, clear all my, let's do close. Kitchen Pass would be more on the folks country than on the east side. What do I have? What have I done here? Redlands. Let's just do for the last year. 
then pitch and pass up. Two oh, specials. Yeah. One on the yeah. thirteen or right here. Right. You do. Yeah. Right. You got the sixty, right? Yeah. Yeah. What else do we have here? We have something. Something must be stuck in research. I saw one. Oh, we got the research. Oh, okay. Farm. Right up on Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I know you want $900,000 for your beautiful house, and you know what? I got to tell you, this is the nicest house I've ever seen in the entire city of Reno Valley, and I am convinced not only is it the nicest house I've ever seen, I'm convinced it's the nicest house. Period. Mm -hmm. And I understand you want $900,000. In the last 12 months, there's been 2,202 properties sold in the entire city of Reno Valley. Condos that were selling for $50,000 up until whatever. Right. Let's just take a look at something. One property. <laughs> with a list price over $500,000 is closed. Yes. Shall we look at it? That's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. <laughs> okay. This house here is the highest closed sale in the entire city in the last 12 months. It was listed for 640 and sold for 590 Please tell me how in the world I'm going to be able to get $900,000 for your house. Right. It's, it's actually the area we were just trying to come. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is, um, this is the area we were just at. This is north side right. off of Walther, right. um, exactly. Reno Beach. Right. It's, it's right there. This is right. it. Right. This is that. Now, right. it's, it's big. Yes. It's almost an acre, right. 26 acres. Right. It's probably, God knows, maybe it's got the swimming pool that, that Bob yeah. was talking That's about. Swimming nice pool, property, property. Yeah. But the bottom line is it's the highest price closing. And by the way, that's well, when did this close, by the way? Because I went back for 12 months. Yeah. Wow, it just wow. closed. Which makes sense. Yeah. Which makes sense because right, mm -hmm. things are going up. So when you're having that type of, and, and you can do this for a specific neighborhood. Yeah. You don't have to fill the whole city. You can say, oh my gosh, you would be the highest closed comp in your neighborhood ever by $100,000. Please take off shoes. What's your heart? That's how do a price reduction. Can I take my shoes off? <laughs> 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 So this is the deal. Let me, let's let's close with the following. We're actually going to get out of here at three, which is unusual for me. This is this is what you need to do, guys. You need to practice. You need to get in. This is the type of thing to get good at. You need to get into the multiple listing, pick some properties, run some searches, start playing with stuff. Okay, go in here to the criteria and say if I if I add. We've never, we haven't even talked about this, Bob brought it up earlier, the expireds, okay? Take a look at the expired listings in the property. How many people were trying to get this price and were unsuccessful in selling? Those are rough. Um, they hate everybody. Yeah. Okay, take a look at days on market. And we didn't look at that. The one that, that, one that we did just look at, the closed, how long did it take them, how long did it take to sell that property? Well, sometimes okay, it was only took 45 days. That was good. And they did price reductions. And they did price reductions. Yeah. Now again, if that said if that was on the market for three years, that's telling me something. So start tinkering around. Um, you know, if, if you were to put in, let's just let's just quickly find some stuff. What if we were to um, eliminate the foreclosures right. and take those out? What if we were to start focusing on pool homes? Um, it, but you had like I think somebody said, I think Shirley yeah. said, another thing you got to be careful with is when you start adding some of the, which is why I don't like to do the bedroom, bathrooms, and all. Everything over here to me, you're asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start putting in, well, I have to have something with the double entry door. <laughs> really? <laughs> if you're searching properties with double entry doors, okay. you're in trouble because we just, as a, as an industry, as a real estate professional, we don't pay any attention to this. Most of it's blank, which is sad, but it's true. But start playing with this sort of stuff, you know? 
Um, again, this is another one that's very good you better be careful with. If you're searching association pool, you're going to have all sorts of problems. Agents' houses with pool, sometimes they click association pool mm -hmm. when they meant pool pool. Yeah, right. Or sometimes when they meant pool pool, they did association pool. So you go, if you're not expecting a pool at this house, because it doesn't say pool, and you see a pool, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> okay. Well, the association has a pool. Well, you put it in the wrong spot. Which also can make you look, talk about previewing property. Right. I'm working with James, and he is adamant. Let me come up with a terrible story. James lost his baby brother in a swimming pool drowning when he was a kid. Hope that didn't happen. No. Okay. Okay. He is psychologically awesome. He has told me specifically, never show me a house with a swimming pool. I'm, I'm his buyer's agent now. And so I pull up my search. Swimming pool, no. I'm adamant about it. Which, by the way, do we show properties to buyers? Let me, let me rephrase that. Do we show buyers properties that we have not seen? No. Shouldn't we? We shouldn't. We do all the time. But in, in best case, the answer would be no. Because we don't want to get surprised by you know where my example is going. I've now pulled it up. I've never seen the house. He was very clear to me. I take him in the house. He immediately has a seizure because he saw the swimming pool glistening in the back and you know flips out. He'll never, never see me again. Never listen to me again. Now, you don't have to get that extreme. You can have you know clients that tell you very specific. The house has to face north, it has to have this, it has to have that, and then we don't listen. This is why I said, who makes better real estate agents, males or females? Females. Ladies, listen better. It's listen better. He tells me never show him a house with a pool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not sure about it anyway. Yeah, show the damn house. You like the pool, we'll fill the damn thing in. You like the house? You know? Yeah. You know, surely here is it's worse than that. You got to find out if someone died in the house. If they were poor, yeah. there's ghosts. If they're rich, it's worth more money. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that. If a celebrity but, died but, in it, it's worth more there money. There you go. Yeah. If Elvis there Presley you know. lived in the house and died, the house is worth a fortune. There you go. If See, a look at scumbag all the died in the house, <laughs> then there's ghosts and they don't even want to go in. All that's important. It's all important. So just so play. This is the deal. There is no substitute for you guys getting your hands on the keyboard and going out and doing this. And better yet, getting your hands on the keyboard while you're in your car. I'm not talking about driving and typing as you go, but get into the neighborhoods. Pull up in front of the houses. Go up and grab it. And, and this is a this is a cool little house. Go on up, park in front of this thing, because I can guarantee you you will have a different feel for this parked in front of it than you will sitting in front of the computer in the office. Mm -hmm. And then not only will you have a different feel, now as you're driving in and out, you're going to drive out and you're going to see a property on Maury, and you're going to say, wow, that's a pretty nice one too. What's up with that? And you're going to pull it up and you're going to say, wow, that one's only 360. Gosh, it looks almost the same. Is this what's going on? Maybe this was just a complete random high flyer. You may come to the determination that whoever bought that house for five eighty nine got screwed, okay, or not. You may come to the exact opposite and say, "Wow, that is a smoking deal," and they stole it because nobody wants to pay eight hundred thousand dollars for a house in Marina Valley. But you take this house and you transplant it over into Whitegate and Riverside, and maybe it's a two million dollar house. I don't know. But I can tell you, you'll get a much better feel for that if you're out in your car doing that. And you have to have a computer, guys. You have to be mobile, okay? Um, iPads are a little more difficult to do this because the keyboards and all the rest of that. But if that's the best you got, then an iPad will be fine. You can do this with an iPad, no problem. You can even do it on your smartphone if you're yeah. super good. Okay, any, any, any questions? Yes, sir. So is that what you mean by previewing, previewing a house Pre is by just driving up and taking a feel of how the uh, well, house you got to run the MLS because a lot of houses they want uh, appointment only yeah some most a lot of houses you have uh, don't disturb the uh, occupants mm -hmm. and you're going to see a lot of signs out on the front of the house for sale and it's not in the MLS if I was you and I had nothing to do today what's the date today six six these properties were listed today now there's another way to do this this is a hot sheet there's four properties that have been listed today, sometimes since midnight till today. Um, got 
Paris, Gerson, Kobe, Woodland, or whatever. I don't know. Well, let's map it and see how, how quickly we can uh, we can go see all four of these houses. What happened here? Okay. Can we see all four of these houses in about two hours or less? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm straight. Mm -hmm. So you call this, this, it's very simple. This is what you do. You know nothing about these. What, you, 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 you. Okay, seller, owner. Okay. How the hell do I just show this? Is that the owner? Call this no, office. do not contact occupant. Right. Call this office. Um, okay. Hey, Russell, Lance Martin, Cobble Banker Town and Country. I see you just listed a house on Main Street. It's nice to see that you really want to sell. I'm, I'm, I'm being Perfect. facetious. You really want to sell the damn thing. How do I get in? <laughs> I'd like to see it. Do you have a client? No. Why do you want to see it? I want to preview it. I might have a client. Can I take a look at it? How do I get in this house? I have to make an appointment with the owner. How do I do that? There's no name and phone number in the MLS. I have to call for you. Okay, would you please call the owner and tell them I'd like to preview their house? I'm available all day. Okay? And let's see, just for giggles. I bet none of these have the ability to see. How do I get in this one? Well, there's a super person. I got a super. Who do I got to call? Call the agent? Who are these idiots? You got to call. Go see the, the listing, uh, the sell number to the right. That's who I call. Agent agent call. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Juan. Mm -hmm. Lance Martin, Cobble Banker Pioneer Real Estate. Excuse me, Cobble Banker Town and Country. I see that you've got a new <laughs> listing. I'd like to see it. It's owner occupied. You don't have their number. You say call first. There's a super on the water pipe. How the hell do I see your house? Now, again, this is not what you say. Okay? But I'd like to see it. All right? Um, very aggravating, guys. This is, this, is our, this is our business. Vacant. Okay, this one's vacant. This is an easy one. Hey, David. Lance Martin. Cold Banker Town and Country. How you doing? Um, we'll pick up. You have a cell phone. What's he got in the comments on the logo? He just listed this, right? Let's see how good he is. Colby? Colby? He has one picture? Uh, you might want to go back. David! Oh, wait a minute. David. Hello? Hey. So I don't know how to use my phone. David, it's Lance Martin. What's happening? Hey, um, tell me about this listing um, you just listed. Is it Covey or Colovi or something? You know what? REO. <laughs> that's, that's as good as you got for me? I love it. All right. Well, no worries. I was just teasing you. Um, all right, I've got a client who I think might want it. Um, I was just running a quick hot sheet. I saw the thing come up, and I thought I'd take a peek. So, okay, bud. Hey, have a good one. That's the one. That's how you say that? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, uh, Charlie, 8165. 8165. Okay, brother. Have a good one, man. All right, man. All right, let's have a beer one day. All right? So why did we go through that exercise, mm -hmm. and why did I waste David Judge time? Um, because that's what we do. Okay. 
Um, I've known David for a long time. Okay? I want to see this house. Part of, partially what I'm doing is I want to go up and see I don't have a buyer for it. I want to see it. It's vacant because I want to put my eyeballs on it. I want to see what $308,000 on this part of town is going to get me. It's vacant, so there's no owner to call. But even though I was kind of chastising those agents earlier for, you know, how do I get in, yada, 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 that's really not what I want to do. I want to say, David, how you doing? How you been? How's everything? It's Lance. Yeah. Okay, I haven't talked to you in a while. How's it going? Let's have a beer. It's, it's all about relationships. Okay? So the relationship is, if I, if, now again, I know David. I've known him for a long time. So that's a little different conversation. And Eric is right. My caller ID is in his phone, his caller ID. So he may, if I was just random, he might not have answered that phone, which is a bad commentary on how he runs his business. But it's good business for us to develop those relationships and make those phone calls. That, that's a nice house. There's like eight of them it's, on that street. Yep. Um, Completely agree. But then all the rest of the houses are 1985 that surround that. That's the only bad part about yep. that. Yep. And you've okay. got to drive past those 80, 1985 houses to get to Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, just, let's just close up with the phone. Let's pretend for a moment that this property has a real-life seller in it. You do, you. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Seller, Lance Martin, yeah. Couple Banker Town and Country. I see that, um, that your house just got listed for sale today. And um, I'm going to be at Preview and Properties, and I'd like to come up and take a look at it something. They will say yes. They might ask you, do you have a buyer? No. Well, I'm confused. Why are you coming up? Because I like to keep myself abreast as to what's going on in the market. I'd like to come up and take a look at it. That way, if I do have somebody who's interested, I'll have a better idea of what the inventory is. And can I come on up today between, you know, 10 and noon or is 2 to 4 o'clock better? And you go up and you look. And if you can get in the house as you look at them, if you can't, maybe you just drive by. Um, See the association's only 40. Hey, bud, I'll call you in two minutes. So previewing is fantastic, and if you've been doing a lot of previewing, it just makes your life so much easier. Because now, when I sit down with you and my clients, my buyers, or whoever it may be, I just know what's going on. And again, we just ran the search. The entire city, assuming well, since midnight, there's been four properties listed. We actually already ran the search. What did we say? How many properties were listed from January till today? 38. No, no, no. For the Tulsa City, was, wasn't it like 300 or something? Oh, yeah. Three not very many. So, uh, 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 it was so, at least half. So what is that? Maybe an average of 50, 10 houses? Not even that. Five houses a day. It's nothing. Now, again, you might not want to see all of them. You may make which, what you're going to have to do. You're going to make a conscious decision. Uh, I don't want to look at any of the condos. Not interested. Uh, I'm not interested in these $800,000 probably. I'm never going to sell. Uh, I'm not interested in looking at the East End. It's too far of a drive. Well, figure out what you're going to do. Having said that, it's still a nice... That's why I used to like when we actually, as a board, and used to carry on properties, it would force us to go out and look at stuff. The board forces it, don't they? Yeah, we, do. we, don't, we don't look at properties. Don't at least in Marina Valley. Yeah. We, we actually had it on a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and then, and then the next day everyone said, no, we don't want to do it, right? Well, the following week? I think probably like five people showed up to the caravan with 20 of them. It takes week. time. Mm -hmm. It takes some time to build that. Well, we've got some offices that do that. Lois Lauer does that. Well, and again, and you know, we should start doing it. If we start getting enough inventory within our offices, <coughs> within this office, we should tour twice a month. Maybe not every week, but twice a month. Well, the first, geez, for four months, we've only had five agents go. Okay, those five agents know what's going on. They know better than they got than the fifty agents that don't go out. Okay, just become familiar with the market. Any other questions? Robin, do you have a question? Yep. Are you ready to answer questions? Mm -hmm. Hi, sir. <laughs> yep. Okay, guys. Good Thank job. You. We're out. I've answered. You might not like them, but. <laughs> uh -oh. Did you? Did, are you? Are you for me or are you? Uh, no. What, no what, yeah. Are, yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to call.